We recently had an 1160 that was out in the Pacific that, that hit something and it really did tear quite a, quite a decent height. And they sailed for about 10 to 12 days, I think it was, with basically the front half of the boat missing. Welcome, Mark and Isabel, SV Jolly Dogs. They have a pretty interesting, harrowing story to put across. Okay. They really don't know what it was. They woke up to a massive bang. Suddenly, the boat came to a complete standstill. It knocked me out. Very, very stressful. Did Absolutely. they need to change their underwear after that? Because I, I, probably... <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Ruby Rose 2 Building. So today I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. I have known him for a couple of years. This is Mike Rees. Mike is the general manager at Seawind Catarans. Mike, lovely to see you finally in Vietnam. Hi Nick, hi guys. So today I want to discuss with Mike a topic that I hope we never actually have to realize in a real world situation. And that is what happens if we hit that submerged container? Seawind have done a lot of work with the 1370 on crash bulkheads, both fore and aft. So today with Mike, we are gonna talk about crash bulkheads, where they are, what they do. We're gonna talk about the keels, which are sacrificial. We're gonna talk about what happens if we rip the drive leg off and all these other massively unlikely scenarios, but they do haunt our nightmares when we're kind of like passage planning and what ifs. So with crash bulkheads fore and aft, with the keels and with engine compartments that are watertight, we've got a lot to unpack today. So this is gonna be really technical as are most of our episodes. So uh, this is hull three and it's really useful to see hull three because it's still in the mold. And that means that we can see like the reverse image of it and that gives Mike a really good opportunity to just talk through collision protection on the 1370. So Mike, what have we got? Yeah, okay, so just, I mean, we're looking at the inboard side of the, the 1370 here. And uh, look, I mean, obviously watertight integrity is, is so critical and hopefully it's not something you have to deal with, but the reality is, you know, people do hit things, whether it's just at the marina or whether it is really offshore. But understanding what's behind the, uh, the, the hull here and understanding where your watertight um, bulkheads are yeah. is, is important. So firstly, we have our first full watertight bulkhead that goes in here. And you can see it butts up to the end of the, uh, the inboard stringer here. Yep. So that's a full composite bulkhead, right? For a long time, we've had composite bulkheads in glassed on the inboard side only. So you get bonded in on the edge of the uh, bulkhead. Yeah. And then you, once it's in, you're then, you're then glassing on the back face and then the outboard side. Okay. On this boat, we're going a little bit further. The way we put these in, is that we have a, a bonding flange that we put in in the front surface, okay, just to give it some extra reinforcement. So what we do is we actually put in a, a temporary component that goes in, it's like a ring frame. We put that in temporarily. We then glass to it, so we end up having a, basically a, like a, an angled shaped piece of glass. Yep. We take the temporary ring frame out. We then put our uh, epoxy glue on the face of it, and we then put in our full bulkhead so we've got a, a bonded flange on the front surface. Right, so double flanged. Yeah. So and, just then on the, and then on the back surface, we can then come in and do our, our glassing. We're sort of looking at a water line that's coming through here, right? So yeah. full, full bulkhead, and that, that all ties into the, to the front of the boat also, giving yeah. a lot of stiffness around that four beam area. We've got our, our first collision bulkhead in here. On the 1370, we then have another watertight compartment that goes through, it's actually the um, component that comes through here and it's part of the furniture and then comes back to around about this sort of level. Right. Okay. So that's a horizontal watertight bulkhead but as I was just saying the majority of the time you're going to strike something that's low down in the water. Right. So getting that watertight integrity low down actually makes sense. So it's way above the waterline. Waterline would be about here somewhere and we've got a watertight bulkhead that's coming along and then going down here. Again this one is all uh, glass um, back and back surface and forward surface. The first bulkhead is about here Yep. Second bulkhead is about around about there, yeah. About there. Yeah, typically, you you know, when you're looking at impact, you're normally looking fairly low down. But I've got to say, we, we recently had an 1160 um, that was out in the in the Pacific that, that hit something, and it really did tear quite a quite a decent height. Now that 1160 was fine. They sailed for about 10 to 10 to 12 days, I think it was, with basically the front half of the boat missing. But we had that same system on the, on the uh, 1160 of a, of a full height watertight bulkhead in. It was glassed only on the back surface, which is, which is uh, certainly strong enough. And, uh, and they made it home no problem. 
So it's a critical, yeah. critical bulkhead in the boat. Do they Absolutely. need to change their underwear after that? Because I, I, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. I don't probably yeah. been all over like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very stressful. But we yeah. um, we talked them through, and uh, we, we there were a whole series of things that we were talking to them to how they could reinforce it along the way. They yep. did that, and they got home, and they were good. Was it yeah. a shipping container? They don't know. They don't know. Okay. They really don't know what it was. It's one of those things where they woke up to a massive bang. The owner said he, uh, he was thrown over the boat and twisted his knee and a real, real shock to them, massively oh. stressful. So they had all this front area flooded, but the bulkhead held good and they, and they, uh, they made it home. Yeah. And they were, they were in the middle of nowhere. The, the timeline was probably in the neighborhood of 20 minutes before we realized, holy moly, we, we have a, a highly compromised vessel which slowed the boat down to around four knots or so. I went up and I right. looked at the cow and I thought, I don't know if I should tell Isabella about this. <laughs> Next thing you do, we, we removed all the contents of the forward locker so that we could see the backside of the um, crash bulkhead. We could see water spraying in little dribbles through a couple of spots. Every time we the bow kind of crashed down in the waves, there was water that was getting through the um, inspection hatch that's up there. It's a little circular six inch yep. hatch. We had a broken boat that was floating and sailing just fine. A huge thank you to Marg and Isabel from Jolly Dogs for chatting to us over Zoom. We really appreciate the time that you guys took to talk to us. We had a huge conversation with Mark and Isabel about the, their entire experience, which is thankfully very rare, but it does happen and it was a very enlightening conversation. We are going to make another episode about how to deal with the unthinkable, which is a collision at sea or an impact at sea which breaches a hull and you have some kind of water ingress situation. So that is a topic that we're going to tackle in a separate episode. If that is something that you want to watch and I encourage you to do so because it's something that we all need to think about, then uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, get your notification bell on so that you are notified when that episode comes out. In the meantime, we're going to go back to talking about the construction of the 1370 and how the boat is actually built to withstand these kinds of collisions that we're talking about. So let's get on board River Rose 2 and continue the discussion with Nick and Mike. As per our discussion on Hull 3, where you could see the reverse of the hull, now the collision bulkhead, sorry, I almost poked you in the eye, is, uh, is already glassed in. So do you just talk us through that just pretty quickly? Yeah, so as we explained, we had that flange, uh, bonding flange put into the, uh, to the hull, and then we've then inserted the, um, the composite bulkhead against that flange. So it's got, basically it's got a, a, a flange ring that we've bonded this onto on the front surface, and then we've come in and then we've glassed six layers of glass all the way around uh, that watertight bulkhead. So it's 100% sealed on both front and aft faces. So that's immensely strong. And just, just by nature of it being a fine bow shape yep. with that bulkhead in there it makes it very very strong in that area um, and obviously you can see you've got these huge uh, carbon capped stringers tying into that as well so it's making the front of the boat very very uh, impact resistance up there both high and also in the lower areas here you've also got a, a longitudinal on the center line here which again that ties into that um, collision bulkhead um, so you if you imagine sure you, you could potentially strike something right on the stem of the bow but also, you might, it might be that you're coming down onto something and you've got this longitudinal stringer uh, on the centre line giving you additional stiffness and strength in this area. So the second bulkhead comes in, so that's, that's that forward area, yep. um, uh, which is sort of turns out to be the, the bunk top, or, or in your case, the, the, uh, the workshop bench. The workshop flooded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so keep your tools dry. So um, that's, a, that's a bulkhead that's going to come in and, and gets glassed in yep. on this surface and comes down and, and it, it ties into this, uh, this, the end of the uh, structural grid that's yep. down uh, at the floor here. So it's actually held in mechanically as well, So it's a mecha just because it's, just, it's going to be braced yeah. there. Yeah. And then you're going to glass... So that's glassed, yeah. okay. glassed in as well. So, so we, have access, we have access into it, but we can get in and we can glass everything. Yeah. Huh. Okay, yeah. brilliant, that's fantastic, okay. Yeah. So moving aft, we now have, obviously, looking at the boat from the other side, this is the sump, so the keels sit here, yeah? Correct, yeah, so, so we just stood at the, um, the main bulkhead here, so that's going into the forward cabin. Any water that's inside the bilge will drain down, so there's, there's drainage holes in, those, in the structural grid. 
and they'll come down through. So we have a, basically there's a, there's a build strain that comes underneath the uh, main bulkhead and then into the sump in this area here. So, so this part here, which is sitting at, uh, 100 mil below the hull, is the sump uh, and the false floor of the keel. Yep. Okay. So that's basically your watertight compartment. Essentially, below that is a separate component. Uh, all right. Let's yeah, just keep going back. So, after gain, um, again we can see all. This is obviously where the drive leg sits. We've got the uh, the bunk comes across here. Yep. Coming down to that point. Yeah. So really, you, you, what they call it, a crash bulkhead is really your, typically your, your fore and aft collision yep. bulkhead. Um, this is sort of a, a watertight bulkhead short. So aft one is a full structural uh, ring frame that has a, an insert panel that yep. goes in there. So that's, gonna, that's a fastened panel. So you can access it um, to get into the transom. Um, but when you, as I say, you, when you're cruising, you want that panel in. Yep. Um, if that were to be breached or there was a breach from the sail drive leg, then yes, you've got a uh, up the, the back of the starboard aft bunk comes up to it's around about this sort of height. It sort of sits in with the chine for maximum uh, bunk width. That's where yeah. that gets dictated. But then your immersed water line is, is way below that point. Okay. Yeah. And that's where you can access the engine to do your sail drive maintenance. Oh. And you can actually inspect, you know, you're talking about sail drive flooding yeah. and, and uh, maintenance. You get really good access to the sail drive from inside the boat and you can do really good access for engine maintenance going through the, the external entrance okay. to the engine bay. And then finally, there's this, this aft compartment, which we talked about um, watertight in case of a collision from the stern. Exactly right, yeah. So it may be possible that some owners may possibly go stern too. So you can, you can you know, park your boat accidentally and, and have a pretty decent impact, or you've got the, the, the probably the more likely thing is that you've got another boat that, that hits you uh, stern That's what happened to our friends um, on Follow the Boat. They got rammed by a ferry a ferry in Thailand. Yeah. And yeah, they just yeah. took the arse of the boat out. I think they were actually protected by their davits, but um, yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, so it yeah. It can happen. Yeah, yeah. It, stuff it very happen. much can happen. What happens at sea? Yeah. So uh, a whole episode on bulkheads. It's super important to us, and I think from looking at everything that happened with Jolly Dogs, really important to understand whether or not your boat is going to protect you, whether you have an impact from the stern or whether you have a, an, a, 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 an impact at the, at the front of the boat. Also, what happens if you do lose a keel? These to us are really important, and so much of sailing and so much of our life sailing is about kind of like ticking off those questions before you leave port. Hope you enjoyed that. There is so much more technical stuff coming this way. So if you enjoyed what you saw, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. We will be back every week detailing the build of this boat until she's launched and then we get to sail her. So hope you enjoyed that. See you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>